Rachel's Mighty Companions, Annika Jawa here. And as we all always do on Mondays, we are doing a Course in Miracles. And, but first we start with an opening meditation to allow our minds to get quiet and to settle, to allow our minds and hearts to open to the spirit of truth that's in us all. So, um, go ahead make and close your eyes, take a breath and breathe. This is your time, my dear. This is your time to retire from the world for a few moments. You ever wanted to retire from the world? This is your chance to retire from the world for a few moments that you might seek reality instead. This is your time. Not ego's time, this is your time. This is your time to rest your mind. So here, we are allowing ourselves to come to rest in the right now. This perfect, precious moment now. Allowing the world to recede. <clears throat> you do not belong to the world. You are God's. The world is not your home. God is. And so let us come home, if only for a few moments, and rest in God. yourself now is the only time there is, for there is no past. The past is over, it can touch you not, and the future has not yet occurred. right now is this moment now. And so we rest in the now. Feeling the now. Breathing in the now, breathing out the past. say in the silence of our own hearts and minds, this perfect, precious moment do I give to you, spirit of truth. Be you in charge right now. For I would follow you, spirit of truth, certain that your direction for me will bring me peace. 
I give you this moment now. Be you in charge. I will follow you, Spirit of Truth, now. Be you in charge. See if you can feel the ecstatic nature of the present moment now. Heaven is here. Heaven is now. And heaven is ecstasy. satisfying nature of reality which is all right here right now waiting for us to come home What's it like to come home and rest? To rest from fear, to rest from judgment, to rest from having to plan, and to rest from any need to defend ourselves. What's it feel like to come home and rest? feeling of peace. Extend that to them. Encircle them in it. See them lay down their burdens. See them throw off their shackles of fear and guilt and pain. See the dark cloak of guilt that they have hidden themselves. Those ones we release like that, those are our saviors. We release our saviors and then their strong arms are free to guide us back home. Bring your awareness back to that core.
I love going home with y'all. <laughs> now you guys, I would not be afraid to take home. <laughs> you guys are cool. All right, so now we are going to do our miracle roulette. Sections in chapter one. Okay, wonderful. All right. And, uh, and then since this is your first time here, so will you touch that randomized button? Five. So chapter one, section five. So we are in chapter one, section five. All right. Chapter one. Wholeness and spirit. Mm -hmm. All right. Oops. Wholeness and spirit. Let me just put this in. Okay. Wholeness. <clears throat> Oops. Nope. All right. Wholeness and spirit. Okay. Search. Does everybody have a book that needs one? All right. So let's just go here. Oh, let me see if I'm in the right book. Do do do. Go back. All right. There we go. Taking forever. Hi, you guys on Facebook. Lovely to see you, Trisha and Terry and Maria. Lovely to see you guys. Okay, so text and chapter one, section five, and spirit. Okay, so I want you to be listening up for spirit's answer to you, okay? And as you hear spirit's very specific to you, then pay attention to it, and if you feel like sharing it, feel free to do so, okay? So, let us see what Spirit's message is for us tonight. Okay. All right. It says, it says, the miracle is much like the body in that both the miracle and the body are learning aids for facilitating a state in which the miracle and the body become unnecessary. What's the purpose of the body? For the body to become unnecessary, where you don't need the body for what? For learning. Now, the purpose you can put your body to for learning. The purpose of the body is for learning, okay? Uh, the purpose of the body is not that we get our value from it. The purpose of the body is not that we be the body and get our value from the body, get love from the body, or even that we would get life from the only purpose this body has is that we should use it to learn, to learn, okay? And the Course of Miracles says, if you are your body for a purpose that your body does not really have, that was not given by spirit, then your body will The Course of Miracles says, the suffering of the body, the stress, the pain of the body, because we're not using it for learning, we're using it for what? Value, worth, love, all those things is not really for. It's really as a communication device. And that once we are in full communication with our true self and with our creator, no longer the body. And of course, it's saying if your body is suffering, then you want to ask yourself, what have I been using my body for besides learning? And the only thing to learn here, according to A Course in Miracles, is how to forgive. That's, that's the learning curriculum here that the body is for, okay? And so the miracle, or we can say the course of the miracle, the body is learning aids. That once you've learned, you don't need them anymore, okay? So then it says, um, so it says, when spirit's original state of direct communication is reached, neither the body nor the miracle serves any purpose, right? So once we have achieved spirit's purpose of what? Direct communication. 
What's my original state of being? Direct communication. Wow, that's our original state of being. Direct communication with our source and with everything. Okay? The body is like a communication break that keeps us. It's, it's the illusion that we're not in direct communication with everything, with our source and with all creation. And so when we realize we are in direct communication with our source and with everything, we don't need a phone, we don't need a body, then the body has been accomplished. And the, then the body and the miracle have no more purpose. It says, while you believe that you have a body, however, you can choose loveless and miraculous channels of expression. Okay? While you're in a body, two choices. While you're in a body, two choices, loveless or miraculous channels of expression. While you're in a body, you got two choices, love or fear, and you can be expressing. And then it says, you can make an empty shell, but you cannot express nothing at all, okay? It says, in other words, you can wait, you can delay, you can paralyze yourself, reduce your creativity almost to nothing, but you cannot abolish your creativity. Good to know. It says, you can even destroy your communication. You can even destroy your body. You cannot destroy your potential. Why? Because you didn't create yourself, okay? So good news. The worst you can do here, the worst you can do is delay yourself. The worst you can do is try to reduce your creativity. That's the worst you can do. You can't kill and you can't kill your creative potential. So no matter how limited or you may feel right now from any problem or any seeming limitation, Whatever it is, it, it cannot reduce your creativity to nothing. You will always have that creative potential. You will always retain your creative power to do what? To experience what you want, manifest what you want, to have what you want, okay? Experience yourself as you are, okay? So that's the thing that we want to be ourselves right now about anything that really feels like it's holding us down, anything that feels like it's holding us back, okay, um, that seems to or feels like it has power over us. Anybody got anything like that right now where it seems frightening because it seems like it may have more power over us, it may have more power than we do, okay? That is, this is the time to remember, hey, nothing can destroy my creative power, Nothing can reduce my creativity to nothing. Nothing can do that. So I will always have creative power. I, can, I will always, which is the same as saying, I will always have power to decide. I will always have power to choose. And my power to choose and my power to decide is my power. And that is the ultimate power. And so if I'm feeling powerless at the moment or limited or afraid of something, feeling like it has power over me, then I need to remind myself, I am the strong one in the seeming conflict. All power is of God. What is not of God has no power over me. And I will always retain my power to choose. I can always choose again. Nothing can take that power from you. If you don't like how you're feeling, if you don't like the feeling of being limited or shackled or held back or held down, then that's the time to remember, hey, I can still choose again. Okay? When you use your creative power to choose once again, then you are utilizing your creative potential. You are, you are uh, 
breathing life into your creative potential. That's where your power comes from, your creative power. I will always be free to choose again if I do not like what I'm experiencing and if I do not like how I feel. And just because I have tried to reduce my creativity almost to nothing and told myself I'm powerless and believed that I was weak and believed that I was limited, just because I have believed that for whatever reason doesn't mean that it's true. Okay. Not really weak. I'm not really powerless. You know, I still have all the power of it that's in the universe. Okay, so that's the thing we want to remind ourselves in whatever area in which we're feeling held back, held down, or limited, okay, or restricted. All right. So where in your life do you need to remember, oh, I can choose, I can always choose again here. I can choose again. This situation. So what's that situation you need to remember that you can choose again? Okay? Yes. So when you're talking about the fear, so we usually talk about the fear that we do to ourselves. Yes. You know, whatever. But when you're experiencing the fear that you see an external, mm -hmm. something that's happening right. out in the world mm -hmm. that is freaking us out. Yes. Probably happening right now today. Yes, could be. Yes. <laughs> so if you if you so is is the problem you are looking external. Uh-huh. Being when you're feeling well, limited or afraid of something. Externally. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And so what you want to tell yourself is that you still retain the power to choose what you want. And so you always retain the power to decide how you want to respond. So what you may be thinking is going to be a disaster, you, what you're saying is choose you think of it differently. You can choose how you want to experience exactly. it. Exactly. There's a lot of people that are saying, you know, I'm going, I'm going bankrupt right now. Right, okay. Okay, and they see that as an external thing. You could choose mm -hmm. to say, even if I do lose all my money, mm -hmm. even if that does happen, mm -hmm. whatever, I can choose how to how interpret to, that. How to interpret it mm -hmm. might not be a disaster. Maybe. That's right. Okay. So and I can always choosing. choose to ask for help from an unlimited source and supply of help. I can always choose who I'm going to side with. I can always choose who I'm going to listen to, love or fear. And depending on who I choose to listen to, love or fear, will depend on my experience, regardless of what seems to be happening. How I, the, the guide I choose to consult and ask for help from, whether we love or fear, ego or spirit, or the, uh, the interpretation I choose. I will always need to choose. Yeah, it's a set. That's what your creativity is. Choice. Choice. It's your power. It's your creativity. It's your creative power. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot I had a choice. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I try to think of it, too, because, you know, That's right. Well, if, with it, go with it and ask that's for right. help. And go, no one asked for can I please save mm -hmm. money? It's not about that. It's about how you're right, how you're interpreting it. It's just it's just a way of exactly. not being afraid of Exactly. The Course of Miracles says that you're afraid, your fear of something indicates that you believe it has more power than you. And so, um, and if you believe something that has more power than you, especially if it's something that didn't come from God, something that died and something that changes, is something that didn't come from God, like the form that didn't come from God because it changes, ends, and dies. If you believe that something not of God has power over you, like external circumstances, 
That's because you are in denial about your creative power. You have forgotten about your creative power that resides in you because why you've reduced your creativity almost to nothing. And now I don't feel like I have any power. I feel like whatever happens to me, I just gotta, I gotta, I'm a victim. You know, you're, that's you being at the effect of the world. That's you being the victim of the world because you don't believe you have any creative power. You don't believe you had power to manifest it. And so you don't believe you have any power to, uh, to change it. Okay, that's because you have reduced your creative power almost to nothing. But just because you've done that does not mean that your creative power has been reduced almost to nothing. It still resides within you. All that creative power that you were given in creation, all the power to create that your creator has, that your creator created you with, your creator endowed you with. So as much creative power as God did, uh, has, that's how much we have. Wow. So you can, wait, I have, I have as much creative power as my creator does? No, come on, for real. That's God. God obviously has more creative power than me, obviously. I mean, look at, look at me, okay? Um, but the truth is, is that we are, we have all the ability to create, to create, to create, um, as our creator does. We are just in profound denial. We have reduced our creativity almost to nothing, to the point where sometimes we feel like we are an empty shell. You ever felt like that? I got no, got no creative juices going, no creative power going, and nothing going on in here, and nothing happening, no creativity, no, no creativity. I just do what I'm told, and I'm just going through the motions, going through the motions. People tell me what the world tells me what to do. The world tells me how to feel. The world tells me what's going on. The world tells me what it means. And I just say, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Okay. That's what it means to be an empty shell. And if you are not exercising your own creative power, your power to decide what you want, who you want to follow, if you're not exercising that power to choose and the power to decide, then you're going to feel like your body is an empty shell. And you will just feel like life is, you know, boring. Boring, okay? Um, so, it's reminding us that um, you can't destroy your potential. Hallelujah. So in this situation where I'm feeling afraid, like it feels like my financial situation is more powerful than me, or my health problems are more powerful than me, or the coronavirus is more powerful than me. Now I need to remember, uh, nope, nothing, the coronavirus cannot destroy my creative potential. Why? Because I didn't create myself. Now if I had created myself, sure, anything could do me in. <laughs> if I had created myself, anything could do me in. You know, toe fungus could do me in. Okay. But I didn't create myself. So nothing can do me in. I will always retain my creative power to choose. To choose whether I want to follow love or fear. To choose whether I'm going to accept the truth about myself or accept the uh, illusions about myself. Okay? Mm. Beautiful. Okay. All right, and you guys, hi guys. Hi, Bridget and Jerry. Um, if you have any questions, you guys can uh, type it in all caps and hopefully that'll catch my eye. Lovely to see you guys here. All right, that was paragraph one. Okay, all right, that's that not bad for one paragraph. We just realized we had all the power in the universe and we're just in denial about it. Yes, I'm, I have all the power in the universe and I am in denial, yes, and my name is Anna. All right. <laughs> I am pretending like I have no power, and that's why I'm sad and scared right now. All right. So the, the, so I was just saying, so the Course of Miracles says when you're afraid of something, like, let's take, for instance, the coronavirus. Um, the Course of Miracles says, here's what you're supposed to say to yourself. Tell yourself this truth. 
so that you can so that you can rev back up your creative power. The Course in Miracles says to say, what is not of God has no power to do anything. What is not of God has no power to do anything. Okay, um, and so it, you said that's your reminder that if it didn't come from God, it doesn't have any power over you who did come from God. And so that's our way to remind ourselves of our true power that we do have, that we're the one with the power, not the things that did come from God because they don't last and they're not happy. Okay? So let us, let us all say that about the coronavirus, shall we? <laughs> this corona, the coronavirus did not come from God, and so the coronavirus has no power to do anything. But my choice does. My power to decide does. All right. So it says, uh, paragraph two, the basic decision of the miracle-minded, that's us, is not to wait on time any longer than is necessary. Okay? So the miracle worker, those who want miracles, those who want peace, those who want healing, their basic decision is, uh, oh, you're saying I could have heaven and peace right now? I don't have to wait? Really? Okay, great. N now, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Not waiting on time any longer for something that we could have right now. Something that's true right now. That's what we're supposed to be deciding. Oh, all power in earth and heaven are given me right now? And I don't have to wait? I don't have to go back to school or anything like that? Great. I'll take it now. I'm not going to wait on time for what you say is already mine. And it says, the reason you do, we don't want to wait on time any longer than is necessary is because time can waste as well as be wasted. Dang. Okay. I mean, we can all, you, we can all relate to the feeling of time wasting us. It's saying time wastes us. So we don't want to wait on time any longer because time, not only can you waste time, but it can waste uh, the body as we've seen, okay? So we want, so we want to, to stop waiting to be happy. We want to stop waiting to have peace. We want to stop waiting to experience love and joy and abundance that is life that is reality that is the gift of our creator no exception no conditions no limits now okay so that's the decision that miracle-minded people are making I, oh oh uh i don't have to wait till i go back to school to be happy oh i don't have to wait for the my right person to be happy to experience love oh i don't have to wait for that new job to have financial abundance. Oh, I don't have to wait till I can afford a new doctor and some new medicine to be healthy. I would like to have, I choose it now. Okay, that's what the miracle minded are deciding to do. That's what we're learning how to do. Stop waiting and accept it now. Okay, so what is it that you have been uh, 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 putting off and delaying? Okay. Is it happiness? Is it love? Is it but abundance? It, what is it? Is it freedom? What is it that you've been putting off thinking that you have to wait on time for? Well, I can't have love till I meet my soulmate. Okay. <laughs> I sure hope that happens soon for you then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <clears throat> so then it says, so great. <clears throat> so it says the miracle worker therefore accepts the time control factor gladly. All right, I accept the time control factor gladly. In other words, we recognize that every collapse of time brings everyone closer to the ultimate release from time in which us the children and the creator are one. Equality does not imply equality now, 
When everyone recognizes that they have everything, then individual contributions to the family of God will no longer be necessary. Okay, so what is the, so as a miracle worker, um, the goal here is that uh, the ultimate release from time, what's the ultimate release from time? Okay, uh, the ultimate release from time is when you realize that you and your source are one. Now you don't need time anymore. Okay, I'm, uh, we only need time, we gotta wait on time, and gotta wait for this, and wait for love, and wait for happiness, and wait for abundance. We don't have to wait for anything because we don't accept that we are one with our source now. So if you're not accepting that you and your creator are one, then the only alternative is time. And what is time? The illusion that you have to wait for what is yours. That's what time is. It's the illusion that you have to wait for something. Okay? That there's a separation between you and something that is yours. That's what time is. But, so, do you want to save yourself time relative to the happiness, the abundance, the creativity, the joy, the love? Then, if you want the love, then remember that you and love are one. Now, oh, wait a minute, that's the way to have love in your life? For real? I thought it was like you had to get on, you had to wait till you found the right dating site. Or wait till you find the right person. Do you want to know that you are a holy, abundant child of God? Do you want to know your abundance now? Then recognize that you and the source of your abundance are one right now. I am one right now with the source of my abundance. I don't need to wait for it. You only need to wait for it when you don't know you're one with it. So the Course in Miracles says, remember, having and being are one. So whatever you don't think you have is what you don't think you are. What you think you don't have enough of right now is what you don't think you are right now. So instead of, I'm gonna wait on this, I'm gonna try to get this, I'm gonna wait on this, I'm gonna wait on that, I'm gonna make a plan in the future for that, and I'll make a plan in the future for love, I'm gonna make a plan in the future for abundance, I'm gonna make a plan in the future for happiness. You could save yourself time and just remember you are love. You are the love you seek. You are the abundance you seek. You are the happiness you seek. And that will save you a bunch of time and money and effort. Isn't that beautiful? Now that is a time-saving plan if I ever heard of one. But that's what it's saying. The miracle worker accepts, accepts the time control factor gladly. I'm so glad I don't have to wait any longer than it's necessary. I could be happy right now. I could have the love of my life right now. I could have abundance now. How? By remembering I am that. I am love. I am abundance. I am happiness. Why? Because that's how our Creator created us. Okay? Wealth created me wealthy. Love created me loving and lovable. Joy created me joyous. Peace created me peaceful. Power created me powerful. So that's really the way to experience all those attributes that we have been trying to experience uh, by things in time, by our plans in time. Here's my plan for wealth in time. Here's my time plan for happiness. Here's my time plan for love. Yes? So I infer that related to this idea that you just shared that I am the abundance that I want is the idea that in time, giving comes first. Mm -hmm. if, I, if, I, if I want to be happy, I want to experience more happiness. And you yes. To share more mm -hmm. happiness. And I can only share more happiness if I choose to feel happy in the first place. Yes, absolutely. Yes. 
And so, and so it's two, two ways to it. I can either remember, oh, I am love, so I don't need to wait till I go find some, or The Course in Miracles says, the giving comes first in time, so I could, oh, I want some love, let me give some. And that also guarantees that I can experience it now without having to wait. And if you are feeling any kind of dissatisfaction in life right now, it's because you're waiting. <laughs> You've, you've done put something off to the future. Okay? I don't have it now because I've put it off into the future. You know? I'm, I, I, I'm not allowing myself to connect with the source of it right now. Now, so the Course in Miracles says that our Creator would never put what our Creator wants for us where we could never be. So your creator, which loves you, would never put your happiness in the future. <laughs> your creator would also never put your happiness in the past. Because those are two places you can never actually be. And so that has to mean that uh, your happiness has to be right here, right now. Wow, what a deep concept. And so you can see what it's saying about the miracle worker, the miracle minded, those who really want to be happy, accept that you don't need to wait on time. They accept the, the time control factor gladly of the miracle. The miracle goes, oh, I am the love I seek. Oh, that means I can experience it right now. Awesome. Okay. That's what a miracle is. I have it now. I am it now. Let me tap into that. Let me experience that right now. And so if there's frustration or dissatisfaction, it has to be because you have put something out in time. Okay? All right. Yes? So you did this section back in December. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and we got to this point and you started talking about in other words than you had been saying tonight that oh yeah we have everything yes that's that right where you were going with yes that. that's right and you even you even said expressed you said to the end of the end of the ego is when you say oh god has given me everything yes exactly like, that's ha right. Ha. That's ha ha. Right. That's Oops. Right. Oh. Yeah, okay. that, yes. Right. Yes. yes. So to go to this last sentence that you read, mm -hmm. when everyone recognizes that he has everything, mm -hmm. which is what you've been saying, mm -hmm. what is it? What, what is he saying here by saying individual contributions to the sonship will no longer be necessary? Is that meaning that, and then also everybody else has everything? Right, exactly. Um, it's saying that that um, in time we all have, so the teachers of God, the miracle minded, the miracle workers, are given temporary special gifts. So that are temporary because eventually everyone's going to accept that they have everything. So when it says uh, individual contributions, that means each person with their unique individual gift that they give to the sonship. Of course, the miracle says they, everyone has a special part to play in the healing plan of mankind. And your individual contribution, your individual and special part in the healing plan is your special unique gifts that nobody else can give like you can. And the entire plan of the healing of mankind is not complete until you offer contribute your individual contribution, special gifts, to the whole healing of mankind. Isn't that deep? We are more important than we have any, any idea about. We are in also profound denial about our worth and our value. I mean, you're saying, this is saying the whole plan for healing mankind is not complete until every single person has their own special contribution. But eventually, we all will wake up and go, oh, we all have it all. Why? Because our Creator doesn't give some to others and not to some, and our Creator's not like that. 
Our creator gives all to all. So there's no creation that has anything less or anything more than any other aspect of creation or else our creator would be partial to specialness. Okay. Our creator would be a bad parent. Like, I love you, Johnny, more than my other child, Susie. <laughs> God's not like that. Okay. And so, um, and so I thank you for bringing up that, that statement from the Course. It's so powerful. It says, the end of the ego. Can you imagine? Like, the, can you imagine? Like, oh, you wake up and like, oh, the ego ended. The end of the ego is when you realize God has given you everything. So that is when you wake up, and that is the end of the ego, okay? Um, but until then, until then, we have to do our special part, and everybody has a special part to play, uh, contributing their special gifts. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, um, thank you for elaborating that. So when everybody recognizes <clears throat> that he has everything, individual contributions, no longer be necessary to even the basic example of the panhandler of the summit horn to be able to know that he has everything. Yes, right. And, and to the extent to where, like the prayer box at my life church, mm -hmm. going to pray for someone, then you're saying maybe they're less than something that they're needing something. Yes. They already have everything. I mean, absolutely. The best prayer you can pray for somebody is. Uh, you know, I, I, I will remember for you that God has given you everything. I'll remember that for you. And since we're one, that means I can remember for you, just like you can remember for me. So let me remember for you that God has given you everything. As I pass the panhandler by, so happy God has given this person everything. Okay. I will remember for you. Yes, I will remember for you. God has given you everything. Okay, That's the best. That is our special contribution, is to remember that and to see that and to affirm that for everybody. Instead of affirming, poor panhandler, poor guy, poor gal, so sad. I will feel sorry for them. That will help them. <laughs> right? Feeling sorry for them is only affirming that their lack is real. And their lack, their lack is not the truth about them. Their lack is just a manifestation of how they are trying to delay or paralyze or put off their creative ability, their creative power. They're trying to reduce their creativity almost to nothing. They're trying to create an empty shell with no power. That's, that's what their lack is a manifestation of, okay? And, um, and we, our job is to, rem like, to accept the time control factor gladly. In other words, um, The Course in Miracles says real charity is not here's a sandwich, here's a dollar, even though those are great things to give. Real charity is to see somebody else as if they have gone further along in time than they seem to have gone. In other words, see them as if they've already gone far beyond their actual accomplishments in time. Just like, just like our teacher has seen, that's how our teacher heals us. When our teacher looks at us, our teacher, go, our teacher sees us as, as having gone way beyond our actual accomplishments in time. That's real charity. So, you know, that's real charity. I will see you as you really are. I'm gonna remember the real truth about you for you. That's real charity. That's something that really does help. And give them a sandwich. And give them money. Whatever it is they think they need also. Spirit knows that we have needs in time and Spirit wants to meet all of our needs real and imagined. Spirit's just like saying, I want to meet all your needs. I just you need you just give them to me though. Stop giving your needs to the ego. Stop taking your needs to the ego. Stop saying, ego, I need some money. <laughs> Come to Spirit and go, Spirit, I need some money. Spirit says, I will meet your needs, the real ones and the imagined ones. 
I will meet them with absolutely no emphasis upon them, like, look what I did for you. And I'll meet them and satisfy them as long as you have need of them, unless you're going to use them to delay yourself in time, unless you're going to make an idol of them. So spirit is not this distant, cold thing that doesn't know that you have needs in time. You've got a body, you've got lots of needs. It's a big need machine. That's all it is. Until you realize its real purpose, which is learning. This body is to help me learn. It's to help me learn. It's to help communicate for learning. Okay? Isn't that wonderful to hear that loving truth about your needs? Isn't it great to hear A Course in Miracles go, we know you got needs. There's no sin. Nothing to be ashamed about. What you need? Do you need money? Do you need a physical healing? What do you need? Do you need some, what do you need? Do more time? What do you need? Just uh, give your needs to spirit. You know, who can use your needs to remind you that you don't really have those needs. That's what spirit does with your needs. Isn't that great? Spirit goes, you have a need for money? Great, I'll give it to me, and then I will show you you don't even need money. Okay, great, that sounds like a great deal. That almost sounds too good to be true. Um, and he will think it's too good to be true until you put it to work, until you put it to use. All these ideas will seem too good to be true until you use them. Of Course in Miracles says that's the only time that you'll realize, oh my God, Of Course in Miracles really is true. That's the only time you'll really get that, is when you actually use it. Okay, and the reason that we don't actually use it is because we uh, believe it's too good to be true, and the reason we believe it's too good to be true is because we don't believe we deserve it. Okay. Um, why? Because we all learned. You know you got to work for it. You had to work for it. You had to earn it, right? That's what we learned as children, right? You know, we didn't learn as children. Well, you deserve it all, honey. Just ask. I mean, I'm sorry. Did anybody in here hear that? <laughs> no. Okay. So we don't believe that we deserve to have everything just because we are the perfect children of God. We were taught you have to earn it. You gotta work for it. You have to earn your living. And love. Yeah, you gotta earn your love. You gotta earn. Your... Now, is that not the cruelest idea you ever heard? You gotta earn your living. You gotta earn your right to live. Now, if that isn't an, an idea of the ego, I don't know what is. But until A Course in Miracles, that seemed normal. That seemed natural. You got, of course, you can't just live without earning your keep and by doing something you hate of course you know that's what we that's what seemed normal and natural and so we hear this and we're like uh that sounds like maybe that's a you know a wolf in sheep's clothing right the course of miracles says we that our ego gets there's a part of us getting nervous when we study a course of miracles like, oh, this is just trying to fatten me up for the kill. This is just the wolf in sheep's clothing saying, you deserve it all because of who you are. We don't believe we deserve it. So we say it's too good to be true. And then we don't use it. Yes. So we, when you say God has given me everything, are you, um, would you say that you are uh, accepting the atonement? Absolutely. With that statement? Absolutely. Would you say that you are in the Holy Spirit? Yes, absolutely. I would absolutely say that's what it means to accept the atonement for yourself. That's just encompassing, encompassing all right. There. Exactly. Yeah. And the, the atonement is the plan for the healing of mankind that God gave to our higher mind, the Holy Spirit. So it's a plan. And the plan is that we eventually go, oh, God has given me everything. I don't have to beg. I don't have to earn, I don't have to com compete, I don't have to take, I don't have to sacrifice, I just have to accept. I, that's what A Course in Miracles is saying, that the atonement, the plan for you to accept uh, your, uh, your natural abundance is that you would accept it. 
Just do you say yes? Do you want it? Can we give it to you? Just say yes. I accept. That's it. But notice how uh, long it seems to take just for us children of God to say, yes, okay, God, look how much it takes. That's how, that's how defended we are. That's how guilty we have learned that we are. It takes a lifetime or lifetimes just to get us to say, okay, I accept whatever all you want to give me, God. I accept, you know, God is, God is the, what A Course in Miracles says about God is that God has given you everything. All the love, all the power, all the abundance, eternal life. And God doesn't keep anything for himself. God isn't like, this is for me and this is for you. And you have to beg for that and earn that and prove your worth for that. Okay? God is not like that. God is like, everything I have is yours. And then here we are going, oh, I don't deserve it. No, I'm going to say no. Oh, you want to give me eternal life? No. You want to give me un unending abundance? No. Oh, you want to give me a love that can never die? No. That's what we're doing. No, I don't want that. I don't need that. I don't need a, a happiness that can't be threatened. I don't need that. Oh, love that cannot die? No, I don't need that. I'm good. <laughs> That's what we're doing. And the whole Course in Miracles is all for getting us to be willing one day, how about now, to just say, I accept my inheritance. God has given me everything, I accept. Isn't that deep? We're just such cute, adorable little calls for love. Then why are we so stubborn? We are so stubborn. We are so stubborn because, because we, our power of learning is so great, so powerful, that we are even able to learn that we do not deserve love. And we've learned it and we've overlearned it to the point where to the point where now somebody says we deserve it all and we're just like, you know, now that must be that must be a trick. Right? So that's why. Let me get this. Thank you, David. All right. Any questions? Hi, guys. Uh, hi, Bridget. God, Bridget says, God knows what you have need of and give it to the HS. Cast your cares. Exactly. And Bridget also says, I deserve it all because God says so. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Any other questions or comments? How does it feel to hear these ideas? Say good. <laughs> do what you like and love. Yes, I, exactly. You know, yes, exactly. You know, college, I'll mm -hmm. use this as an example. Mm -hmm. You're going to do what? Mm -hmm. After they spend all that money, we're not going to do what you graduated? Yeah. No, mm -hmm. I'm going to be a flight attendant, and I have 40 years, best job I ever had, love mm -hmm. everything. Yes. But it was like, I had all those things to go. That's right, and exactly. This was my dream. And she and I said, Yes, that's, that's right. Landing. That's a big. That's Don't a, worry about going to work for Blaine. Do what you love. That's right. Do what you love. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Great. You're giving me. That's right. Giving me permission. I said, "This is the wrong thing." Mm -hmm. There you go. But Beautiful. If you do what you love, it's and good. and the abundance follows. And not only the jobs. Yes, just exactly. Just in life. Yeah. Exactly. That's what the atonement is. It's the plan mm -hmm. that Spirit has made specifically for you. In all your special little call for love defenses, it's, it's, it's spirit has made a plan that's specific to you. Your experiences, all that you've learned about how and why you don't deserve it all right now. And spirit makes this plan that's tailor-made for your experiences, your calls for love, your fears, your skills, your strengths, your talents. Uh, that's specifically tailor-made to teach you 
and to uh, remind you that you deserve it all right now. God's given you everything, and do you want it right now? That's the that's what A Course in Miracles calls the atonement. Wow. Okay, great. So, and look, Tony says, after 25 years of studying with you, fear no longer lives here. Amen. Right on, Tony. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so here we go. So, paragraph number two. It says, when the atonement, which is this plan for the healing of man, has been completed, all talents will be shared by all the children of God. That's because God is not partial. What does that mean? That means all of God's children have God's total love. And, and all of God's gifts are freely given to everyone alike. So that's what we've been saying. That, that God has given every, everyone everything. Okay? And once we all accept that, then um, we won't have special parts. We just have special parts right now because we haven't accepted that we all have it all. Okay. And then there's a quote from the Bible. It says, except ye become as little children means that unless you fully recognize your complete dependence on God, you cannot know the real power of yourself in your true relationship with the Creator. I love that phrase. Okay. So here we are talking about, you know, all your needs and your wants. And you don't have to wait on time anymore because God has given you everything already. But until you give all your needs to God, until you give all your needs to God, all your needs and your wants, until you recognize your complete dependence on God, you won't know the real power that you have in your relationship, your real relationship with God, your source. So until you go to God with everything, you won't know the real power that's in your relationship with your source. Okay? Where's my power? Is my power in my money? No. Is my power in my body? No. Is my power in somebody else liking me? No. My real power is in my relationship with my source. Okay, that's the source of my, it's my real source of power. That's where my power comes from. I experience the real power I have because I take my needs to God. I am dependent on God for meeting my needs, just like my child is dependent on me for its needs. Okay, and if I am feeling powerless, if I'm feeling afraid because I'm feeling powerless compared to this situation, it's because I am not casting my cares upon God. I'm not taking my needs to my creator. I'm giving them to my ego. I'm taking them and giving them to me to figure out. Okay? So wherever it is that you are feeling a lack of power right now, wherever that is, is it a health condition? Is it a financial condition? Is it a relationship condition? Is it a global pandemic condition? Whatever that power, powerlessness feeling is, that fear, that's where you need, that's where you are not aware of your real power because you are not experiencing your true relationship with your creator. Isn't that powerful? So isn't that ironic that my true experience of ultimate power comes from my dependence? Interesting. We don't like, we typically, we don't like the word dependence. I don't want to be dependent. Don't call me dependent. Don't, don't call me codependent. Okay. It's saying that when you are dependent on yourself, you can't experience anything but helplessness and powerlessness and fear and anxiety. Okay. But when you are dependent on your source for your needs, for your peace, for your happiness, for your fulfillment, then you will experience your true power. You'll realize, I have it all. Well, good to remember. Except ye become as little children. You'll never know your true power. Okay. 
So wherever you are experiencing powerlessness and fear right now, that's, in your, that's the place in your life where you want to take whatever needs you think you have, take them from the ego, take them from yourself, and cast your cares upon God. Cast them. Here you go, God. Here's my needs. Okay? All right. Okay, beautiful. And then it says, it says, um, the specialness of God's children does not stem from exclusion, but from inclusion. What does that mean? That means all of my brothers are special. And so if any of us believe we are deprived of anything, our perception becomes distorted. Okay. So distorted perception, fear, pain, suffering, where does that come from? It comes when you believe you are deprived of anything. Why am I upset? I believe I'm deprived of something I want and need but don't have. Okay, That's where suffering and fear really comes from. Good to know. It says, whenever you think you're deprived of something you want and need because you're not taking your needs to God, your perception's going to be distorted. You're not going to be, see, be seeing the ecstatic, abundant nature of reality. That's what it means to say your perception is distorted. You're going to be looking out and going, lack, lack, not enough, lack, 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 not enough. Yes? Um, I'm going to ask you to see, uh, see if you can connect a few dots for me. Because I, I keep coming back in, in these last couple sentences about um, how our, our real power Son, which is really us, all, us, us. in mm -hmm. union, mm -hmm. not as the individual now, mm -hmm. the individual now, it's us in union, that our real power, I, I'm asking you to comment on how what we're talking about now um, isn't necessarily talking about us as individuals, but as, as us in union. For me, it's both. For me, it's both. Why? Because, because it is both. You know, uh, what, it, what, what goes for the one is also true for the, the, so, the seeming many. You know, so it's true about us as one and it, us individually. Okay. So, and when we realize that God has given us all everything equally, no specialness, then, then we won't we won't have a specific, special part to play, okay? You only have a special, specific part to play in the healing of mankind until we all go, oh, we all have it all, equally, okay? So does that answer your question? Okay, beautiful, um, beautiful. And it says that, um, it's interesting, the perception that uh, you are deprived of something. The perception of need, guess where it comes from? Deprivation, self-deprivation. Of course, miracle says needs didn't come from God. Needs aren't natural in the universe that God created. He says needs come when we deprive ourselves. What? What do, you, what do you mean my need for financial safety and security came from me depriving myself? What? But it's saying that needs come when you deprive yourself. Uh, and when you're depriving yourself, your perception becomes distorted and you will see lack. And the only way that you will did uh, see yourself in lack, see yourself as deprived, is when you are not being dependent on your source. You're not taking your needs, your perception of lack, to your source. And going to your source, or just remembering the truth, God has given me everything. Okay, that's not everything except money to pay my rent. Okay. Um, that the end of lack or the end of the need that comes when you are depriving yourself is the realization God has given me everything 
and God has given everybody else everything. And if that is true, then there is no real lack. There is only a distorted perception of lack. So take your lack to your source and say to yourself, God has given me everything. Okay? Even though, it, it, you know, let's say you have a financial seeming lack. You feel deprived financially. When you say, God has given me everything, it doesn't seem like it's answering the financial need, does it? Right. It's like, wait a minute, I have a, I have, I'm, a, I have, I'm, I'm bankrupt. And, you, and you're telling me if I say God has given me everything, that that's going to help me? Come on. I need a good financial advisor. That's the answer here. <laughs> it's saying that lack is a distorted perception where you are depriving yourself by not taking your need, your <coughs> illusion of need, to your source, who has given you everything and who will remind you again that it has given you everything. So when we say God has given me everything, what it does is it corrects our distorted perception of deprivation. If God's given me everything, then this experience of deprivation, not enough, can't be true. Like, they can't both be true. <sighs> wow. I love hearing. This, this is, um, and it says, when you have a perception of a deprivation, when you, when you have an experience that you are deprived of something, I wish I had no, I don't have enough love, I'm deprived of it. I don't have enough money, I'm deprived of it. I don't have enough time, I'm deprived of it. I don't have enough energy, I'm deprived of it. Anytime you perceive yourself deprived of anything, you, it says that, it says, the whole family of God is impaired in its relationships. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm sorry, mankind. I'm sorry for impairing all of y'all in your relationships with my perception of deprivation. Sorry. That's how powerful our minds are. Every time you see yourself as deprived of something, when you're not, you are impairing the relationships of everybody. Why? Because you're demonstrating, you're teaching deprivation. You're teaching deprivation. And guess what deprivation does to relationships? Anyone care to hazard a guess <laughs> from experience? What happens in your relationships when you're feeling deprived? Anyone? That's right. Yeah. yeah. You become real demanding. <laughs> and then when you become real demanding, what do they become? Real resistant. <laughs> real resistant. Real defensive. Really resentful. Wow. It's, the Course in Miracles says that the way that you heal all of mankind in its relationships is you take your needs off of them. So, of course, a miracle says you can't suffer the, the, the distorted perception of deprivation without projecting that. You can't. If you're going to have this distorted perception of, I don't have enough love, I don't have enough beauty, I don't have enough intelligence, I don't have enough of this, I don't have enough power. Um, he says, if you see yourself as deprived, guess what? Someone's going to have to pay. And then that's what the special relationship is. It's when you go look for somebody who will say, all right, I'll pay the price for your perception of lack. I'll pay the price for your lack of self-esteem and self-worth. Sure, you're beautiful, you're you whatever, you know, I'm lonely, sure. Sure, I'll make up for your self-deprivation. I'll make up for that, I'll compensate for your lack of self-love, sure, I'll make it up to you. For a while. If you'll do the same for me. And for a while. And for a while, and if you don't do it with someone else at the same time. <laughs> I'm so sad. My partner went off to, went off to deprive and project on someone else. I'm so sad. 
<laughs> my partner left me to go make someone else responsible for his happiness. So sad. I need therapy. Okay. If you, it says, if you perceive yourself as deprived, it says, you will impair all the relationships of mankind. Okay. Not to mention just your own. Well, so, so if you really want to improve your relationships, then allow your perception of lack of something to be, take it to your source. Don't take your needs to other humans. I mean, you think you think that we would know by now, don't take your needs to other humans. Okay. Um, when you take your needs to other humans, it impairs your relationships because they are not your source and they are not the source of your deprivation. You are, okay? Why? Because you are not dependent on your source. You don't go to your spirit parent when you have a need. And that's why you feel like you don't have enough of this and you don't have enough of that, okay? And if you take that need to your human partners, then your relationships will be impaired. Anybody got any impaired relationships? Anybody ever had an impaired relationship? The relationship that's kind of limping along. <laughs> you know, those limping relationships. So, uh, great. Now we just heard, that we heard the key to real abundance. We heard the key to lasting abundance, for real. We heard the key to experiencing our true power our true creative power and we also heard the key to healthy healthy strong relationships relationships that are not impaired and limping along we just heard the answer to all three of those things and the crowd went crazy with excitement because they heard the keys they heard the key to relationship heaven and financial abundance and health abundance. All right. Okay, beautiful. So, okay, and we're almost at the end of our session. So we're going to stop here. That went fast for me. All right. So now we're going to do the, um, the financial expression of appreciation. Beautiful. Thank you, Bridget. Terry says, wow, I have deprived myself of so much. Me too. Yes. And Tony Lucky says, God and I are one. Yes. Hi, Patty. Yeah, I'm live. And Bridget says, I learn trust and rest in God right now. Yes. That's mm -hmm. Patty. Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Next Monday. All right. So, and if you guys would like to make a financial expression of appreciation to my Miracles Ministry to help it to expand and extend, then you can go to my website, AnnaKujawa.com. That's K-U-J-A-W-A. And, um, and find my uh, uh, services we offer page, and there's PayPal buttons there. And thank you so much. Um, also, if you would like to extend and expand this message to more of the children of God, go ahead and post it on your Facebook feed. And thank you for doing that. Also, you can find all of my classes and readings um, and Course in Miracles meditations at my YouTube channel. Um, so go to my YouTube channel, and when you get there, hit like and subscribe, and then you'll get a notification whenever I post a class. Okay? Beautiful. Okay. Also, I, I am a holistic psychotherapist, and I have a psychotherapeutic niche where I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions for people who are going through a transition of some kind and could use some miracle-minded support while they're going through it to save themselves time. And I'm available for that one-on-one. -on -one. And the way to schedule that is to either private message me here or go to my website, find my phone number, and text me. Best way to reach me is always to text me. Okay. I look forward to seeing you. Okay. All right. Any, any burning questions or comments before we go on to our integration meditation?
right. Okay, so now we're going to do our integration meditation. I always end my sessions with the integration meditation where we take the ideas and we use them. Okay, so it's you, when you use them, you'll see that they're true. So now we're going to use them so we can get the power and the miracles from them. So take a deep breath and just breathe and feel. Feel what these ideas feel like when you listen to them and also when you listen to them in a group, in a circle of other <coughs> souls who also want to be miracle-minded. How does it feel? So, I want you to bring to your awareness a situation or a relationship where need and lack seems real right now, where you feel deprived somehow of something you want but don't think you have, like love or time or money or power or happiness, whatever it is. Bringing this situation or relationship to your awareness. I want you now to identify that need that you think you have, that deprivation you feel you're suffering from, and I want you now to bring that need to your source, your unconditionally loving spirit parent whether you call that God or love or whatever. Bring that need to your loving, unconditionally loving, supportive, abundant, rich, source parent. And say, God, here's my need. I think I need some of this, and I think I need that. God, will you take care of this, please? I, th I have deprived myself of abundance. I have deprived myself of love. I have deprived myself of power. And I am now giving you my need. I think I need this, and I think I need some of that. And I acknowledge and recognize I deprive myself of it. And remind yourself, I have not been deprived of this by anyone or anything except myself. And that was my call for love. Cast your cares upon your source who cares for you. Don't be embarrassed by the needs you have made for yourself. We've all done it. And tell yourself, for my happiness and my abundance and my safety and security and my joy in this situation, I am completely dependent on God. I am completely dependent on my source because God is my source of everything that I want and need. In this situation in which I seem to be deprived of, fill in the blank, God is my source and my supply. 
I am dependent on God for this. And if there is a person that you had projected your need and projected your deprivation onto in this situation, if there is a relationship that you impaired by projecting your deprivation onto them, take it back. Take it back. They are not the source of my love. They are not the source of my security. They are not the source of my supply or my happiness or my worth or my value. I take that need and that deprivation back off of them and I give it to God. Here, God. God, I want you to show me my worth and my value. God, I want you to show me my real supply, my real wealth. God, I want you to show me my true security, my true safety. Truly, God, you have given me everything. Truly, I am sustained by your love. You are my source and my supply. You meet every need I think I have. God has given me everything. Thank you, God, for the everything you have given me. <clears throat> and now, let us be as little children who take all our needs and wants to our unconditionally rich and loving spirit parents. Not to ourselves, not to any others. This is our true power, our true wealth, our true safety, and our true security. And to that we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And to that we say, amen. And so take a breath and bring your awareness back to the room. Awesome, good job. Give it up for yourselves for coming out to hear some loving ideas about yourselves. Thank you guys, I appreciate you so much and I'll see you next time I see you.